wash away my sin Nothing but the blood of Jesus What can make me whole again Nothing but the blood of Jesus Church online worship and message for this Sunday, January the 16th, 2022. I'm Pastor Matt Skiles. I hope that you are enjoying the blessings of the Lord today. I hope that the worship music that we played at the start of this service was a blessing to you, and I hope that you've had a good week this past week. We're going to invite the presence of the Lord in now and ask God to bless uh, the message that we're about to hear, the Word of God that will come forth. As always, I encourage you to take your own needs and burdens and requests to the Lord 
and ask God to minister whatever needs you may have today. So join with me as we go to the Lord in prayer. Let's invite God's presence in now and ask him to bless the word of the message we're about to hear. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you again for another opportunity to come into your house and to worship you in spirit and truth. We thank you for those that have gathered online to be a part of this online worship and message gathering today. Father, we ask that you will give your word free course in the hearts and the lives of your people. We pray that the message will be an encouragement and will be uplifting and will strengthen and encourage us today as we hear from your word. Father, we ask that you will anoint the message and the messenger. We pray that you'll give us ears to hear. Father, as always, we take our own individual needs to you this morning. We pray for those that are sick, those that are afflicted, those that are grieving, those that need comfort and peace. We pray for those that have financial or material needs in their lives as well. We pray that you'll heal the sick body. We pray, Lord, that you'll minister to marriages and families. Bless us financially, God. Meet every need that we have. And Father, let us go through this online worship and message this morning and be encouraged by the words that we hear. And Father, we ask you to bless us now, for it is in Jesus' name we ask all these things. Amen. Well, if you have your Bibles, your tablets, your smartphones, whatever your Bible app that you're using this morning with you, please go with me, if you would, uh, to the book of John chapter 2. John chapter 2, and we're going to be reading verses 1 through 10. John chapter 2, verses 1 through 10. And we're going to be sharing a message this morning titled, When the Wine Runs Out. This, of course, is the story of Jesus being at the marriage supper in Cana in Galilee, where he performed his first miracle. So John chapter 2, verses 1 through 10. I'll read that in just a moment, but being that this is the start of the NFL playoffs, it started this weekend, and we already have had a couple of games already played. I'm not a big football fan, but um, I, uh, I found this introduction, and I thought it would be kind of funny to have something humorous uh, today to start off with. And a man got a ticket to the Super Bowl in Miami. And uh, he was all excited. He got to Hard Rock Stadium in Miami and took his place and took his seat there and uh, realized he was sitting up in the nosebleed section of Hard Rock Stadium in Miami, Florida. So he got his binoculars out and gazed around the stadium and he spied an empty seat sitting right on the 50-yard line. And he decided to sneak down there to that section of the stadium and see if he could possibly sit in that empty seat. It had been vacant for most of the first quarter, so he assumed it was probably an empty seat. He gets to the empty seat and he asks the gentleman sitting in the seat next to the empty seat, may I sit here? Sure, the man replied. This was my wife's seat. You see, she was a huge football fan. And we always came to the games together, even Super Bowl games, but she passed away. I'm so sorry for your loss, the man said, but I'm curious. If you and your wife were such big football fans, why didn't you give the extra ticket for this Super Bowl to maybe a family member, a friend, or a relative? To which the widower replied, because they're all at her funeral. <laughs> Now, I don't say that to be light and to be funny, but you have to admit that is kind of a funny story. Praise God. Let's go ahead and read, if we would, John chapter 2. Let's begin reading at verse number 1 all the way down to verse 10. And I'll be coming out of the uh, NIV this morning, but whatever translation you're using is going to be more than appropriate and useful for this morning's message. It says, On the third day, a wedding took place at Cana in Galilee. Jesus' mother was there. And Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine was gone, Jesus' mother said to him, They have no more wine. Woman, why do you involve me? Jesus replied. My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Nearby stood six stone water jars, the kind used by the Jews for ceremonial washing and each holding from 20 to 30 gallons. Jesus said to the servants, Fill the jars with water. So they filled them to the brim. 
Then he told them, now draw some out and take it to the master of the banquet. They did so. And the master of the banquet tasted the water that had been turned into wine. He did not realize where it had come from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew. Then he called the bridegroom aside and said, everyone brings out choice wine first, and then the cheaper wine after the guests have had too much to drink. But you have saved the best till now. And again, our message title is When the Wine Runs Out. Now, this is not only the story of the first miracle that Jesus did in his earthly ministry on the earth. This story is also a parable about life and how Jesus can turn our lives around for good. And it's important to remember that when the wine runs out, Jesus Christ is still there to bring the miracle into our life. A lot of times, a lot of times as Christian believers, we find ourselves in situations kind of where we see the situation taking place here at this wedding, at this wedding feast in Canaan. And the guests had been there for some time. This had been a very, very festive occasion. And now we find there is a crisis. You must understand, though, as we begin to unpack this message, that when the wine runs out, could also, in a fact of a way of saying it, could also be very much representative of when things go bad in our own life. When our dreams, our expectations, our goals, our hopes, they don't reach fruition. When even the best laid plans in our lives sometimes just do not come to pass. All of us have had hopes and dreams and aspirations, things that we would like to accomplish. I know as a pastor, I've had a vision for where I've wanted to go, what I've wanted to do, what I've wanted to see God accomplish in my life and in the church and in the ministry that I'm a part of. And I've had great success, but I've also had moments where those dreams and hopes and what I've envisioned for my own life just quite haven't come to pass like I hope. And this morning I want to convey in this message that when the wine runs out, that doesn't mean, that does not mean that we failed and it does not mean that we're going to stay in the situation we find ourselves in. Every one of us are going to endure problems. Every one of us are going to endure situations that seem hopeless that seem like there's no way out. But aren't you thankful that Jesus is in the midst of our everyday life? He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. And he said to his disciples that he would be with them always. He is with us always. So let's unpack this very simple but very profound message this morning and look at a couple of points here regarding this particular story in John chapter 2. And I want us to look at point number one as we unpack the message and convey the points this morning. And that is the problem at the wedding. Now, you must understand that marriage was an honored institution amongst the Jewish people. Uh, there's probably no more important event in the lives of the Jewish people than a Jewish wedding. And whenever a, a, Jew, a Jewish family or a couple would be married to make it very simple to spare you all of the theological details weddings were big deals amongst the Jewish people they went on for sometimes days and weeks and it was the responsibility of the bridegroom to provide the meal the feast the food the wine he was the one that was to make ready for his bride so whenever a Jewish boy and a Jewish girl were betrothed or engaged, he would go back to his father's house. He would prepare a chamber, a house, a place for his bride, and then he would come back and receive her unto himself. Jesus said the same thing in John chapter 14, verses 1 through 6, whenever he told us that he went to prepare a place for us, and if he went and prepared a place for us, he was going to come again and receive us unto himself that where we, he was, we might be also. Jesus was the bridegroom, and someday he's coming to receive us as the bride. 
So this wedding was a very important festive time. Jesus, Mary, his mother, his disciples, and many other followers were there. So you've got a crowd of people. And, and it's important to remember here that marriage is important in the eyes of God, the union of one man and one woman. But it was even more important in the, in the Jewish custom. And here we see the nightmare of nightmares for a groom. The wine runs out. You notice if you go back into the scripture, let me go back and read it again. It says in John chapter 2, let's look at verse 1 all the way down uh, to verse number 4. On the third day, a wedding took place at Cana in Galilee. Jesus' mother was there. And Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine was gone, Jesus' mother said to him, they have no more wine. So there's the problem right there. They have no more wine. They've run out. And now all of a sudden, this wonderful festive occasion is now turning into a nightmare for this bridegroom because he has food to feed his guests. He has a wonderful festive atmosphere. He's been a gracious host. He is enjoying this, the, the celebration, he and his wife, the bride. And now all of a sudden, they've run out of wine. And you must understand that this is a very embarrassing, embarrassing situation for the bridegroom. It would have been a terrible insult. It would have been a terrible insult on, on, on the part of this groom to his guests. His reputation would have been ruined. He would have been looked upon as a horrible guest. It would have been a lot better had he not even been married in the first place. And the occasion of his wedding, which held so much promise and hope, should have been the happiest time of his life, but it's on the brink of becoming one of the worst times of this bridegroom's life. Like the wine, his hopes ran out. The joy that he had hoped and longed for was gone. There are a lot of things like that. There are a lot of things in your life and in my life that we can probably look back on and see where the wine has run out. Much like the bridegroom, we're in a hopeless situation or we're in a difficult situation. We are in a tenuous spot and we're wondering how are we going to get out of this. The Bible is full of examples of God's people finding themselves in precarious situations. But thank God the Lord was there. And, and it's important to remember what happened because there was a problem at this wedding. So that leads us into our second point that we want to unpack and convey this morning. And that is when our wine runs out. Now we looked at the wine that ran out at the marriage supper and feast in Cana. It was horrible for the bridegroom. It was horrible for his family. The embarrassment and the humiliation that he was dealing with and facing. And the master of the, of, of, the, of, the, of the wedding, who most likely was his father, was there. And this bridegroom was hosting all of these people. And they run out of wine. Well, now let's look at point two and, and talk about how when our wine runs out, what do we do when our hopes and our dreams run out? Many of us have started off with lofty dreams. Most Americans dream of being successful in their careers, making it to the top. You know, when I was younger, I had hopes and dreams and aspirations. I, I wanted to do a lot in my life. And sometimes dreams just don't always tend to work out like we had hoped. Many people think about possibly having a great career, being a famous actor or musician, striking it rich, Maybe becoming a professional athlete. Maybe doing something in their life, being uh, married and having a family and having a career. People have a lot of goals. I counsel with a lot of couples that I marry. And in my premarital counseling, I, 
I start off the very first session by talking to them about their goals and their dreams and their expectations for marriage. And they all have wonderful hopes and dreams, as do most people. But what happens when the wine runs out? Somewhere along the line, the wine runs out. Our dreams fizzle out and come to nothing. You know, this wonderful hope and idea that we have has evaporated and we're left with a common and mundane job, ordinary daily life, become disillusioned because our, 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 our dreams and our hopes didn't quite work out the way we had planned. People get depressed and discouraged when they see other people around them and they think that they haven't achieved anything. Sometimes the wine runs out on our marriages and our families. Most couples and most people in love get married and they want to have a happy, long lasting marriage. Unfortunately, there's some unrealistic expectations that they might have, but they start off with love. Unfortunately, those expectations aren't always what we hope for. You know, a young man asked his girlfriend to marry him and she said, okay, when you have $50,000 in the bank, I'll consider it. Six months later, he came back and kissed her hand, got on one knee and asked her to marry him again. Do you remember my conditions? She said to her boyfriend. Yes, I do, dear. Well, exactly how much money have you saved? To which the humble groom said, $75. She sighed and smiled and said, I guess that's close enough. You know, during the different phases of marriage, we have children, we raise our kids, they become teenagers, we become empty nesters, and then we grow old in our later years. Marriages and families go through a whole variety of changes. Our kids grow up and move away, and our families go through ups and downs. Some families have to experience their children not reaching the goals they had set, marriages not reaching what they want. Sometimes, sometimes the wine runs out in our marriage and in our families. Sometimes the, the, the wine runs out in our finances. We try to save, we try to take care of our bills, we try to be good stewards, but medical condition comes along, medical bills pile up. Perhaps we have to go through a divorce or we have to see a downturn in the economy and it affects our business and we file bankruptcy. Life comes at us fast and our, the wine can run out in our finances. But I'm here to tell you that, thank God Jesus is still present in the situation. Sometimes the wine of our own relationship to the Lord runs dry. I think about many Christians that started off walking with God, serving God, and then they face hardship. Then they go through struggles. They deal with issues in their life and temptation. And the difficulties come. And before too long, their relationship with the Lord is not what it used to be that's run, run dry. You see, we've got to be very, very careful that we don't let the wine run out in our relationship to the Lord. We don't let the wine run out in our marriages, in our finances. We don't let the wine run out in our own life day in and day out. So many people, so many people strive and have goals and aspirations and try to live their life each day. And I will assure you, Jesus said, in the scriptures very, very clearly in John 16 and 33. He said, these things I've spoken unto you that in me you might have peace. Jesus said, in this world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. You see, sometimes the wine is going to run out in our own life and in our own situations. And that leads us to our third point in this message we wanna convey was that the source of new wine is always present with us. Do you notice that in the midst of this story, let's go back if you would, please, and let's look again at John chapter 2, and go to verse number 4. 
Jesus' mother has just told him in verse number three, they have no more wine. I'm sure Jesus was well aware of that. And Jesus said, woman, why do you involve me? He says, my hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, do whatever he tells you. Nearby stood six stone water jars, the kind used by the Jews for ceremonial washing, each holding from 20 to 30 gallons. Jesus said to the servants, fill the jars with water. So they filled them to the brim. Then he told them, now draw some out and take it to the master of the banquet. They did so. And the master of the banquet tasted the water that had been turned into wine. He did not realize where it had come from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew. Then he called the bridegroom aside and said, everyone brings out the choice wine first, and then the cheaper wine after the guests have had too much to drink. But you have served the best, saved the best till now. Now, I want to say that because Jesus was at the wedding. And there was someone there at that wedding who could do something about the wine running out. Jesus was present at that situation. And I submit to you this morning, Jesus is present in your life too. He can take the plain, worthless water of your life and transform it into something miraculous. He can take your emptiness, your unhappiness, your disillusionment, and your dashed hopes and resurrect them and breathe new life into them. That's what he did at this wedding. He more than met the need. They ran out of wine. Jesus just did not bless them with wine. He gave them 120 to 180 gallons of wine that they could draw from. And not only was it that, he saved the best for the last. The, 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 the master of the banquet, more than likely the father of the bridegroom, said you saved the best until the last. This means not only did the Lord give them what they needed and provided what they needed, but it was even better than it was before. That's what God promises. You see, we might think that the wine has run out in our own life and in our own situation. But I promise you that the Lord Jesus Christ is present to meet the need in your life. And he can do it. Ephesians 3 and 20 says, Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all we could ask or think through the power which works in us. When Jesus took the five barley loaves and two small fishes from the little boy that handed it to him. He not only fed the 5,000, but that little boy went home with 12 baskets full of fragments of fish and bread. What a story he had to tell his mother and father. You see, that little boy didn't have much, but he took what he had and he gave it to Jesus. Jesus was present there teaching that day amongst the 5,000. He was present that day at the marriage supper in Cana. He was there that day when the storm began to rise in the Sea of Gennesaret and the disciples were afraid they were going to die. And I'm here to tell you, he was in the boat with the disciples. He was at the marriage supper in Cana. He was with the 5,000 there teaching when he took the five loaves and two fish and fed them all. And he's present. He's with you right now. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. And he can give you something new and something better than you've ever experienced in your life. Amen. He can give us new dreams, new vision. He can give us a better marriage. He can give us a stronger family. He can bless us financially. And he can draw us closer to him because he's able to do that. Sometimes we think, God won't show up. Let me share with you that he will. Every time in my 50 years of life, 30 years as a Christian, when I've needed the Lord Jesus Christ, he has always been there. God has never failed me. He'll never fail you. You might think the wine has run out in your life right now. 
But Jesus is right there ready to fill the empty vessel of your life with new wine. Praise God. I want to close with this last illustration before I bring it to a close. In Vietnam in 1971, there was an interpreter named Hien Pham, who was an energetic young Christian man. He worked with the American military forces and with missionaries. Shortly after Vietnam fell with the fall of Saigon in 1975, Hien was imprisoned on accusations of helping the Americans. His jailers tried to indoctrinate him against democratic ideals and the Christian faith. He was subjected to communist propaganda and the daily deluge of Marxism. It began to take its toll. Maybe, he thought, I've been lied to. Maybe God does not exist. Maybe the West has deceived me. So he had determined that when he awakened the next day, he would not pray anymore or think of his Christian faith. Because God was not going to show up anyway, he thought. The next morning, he was assigned the dreaded chore of cleaning the prison latrines. As he cleaned out a latrine, his eye caught what seemed to be English printed on one piece of paper. He hurriedly grabbed it, washed it, and after his roommates had retired that night, he retrieved the paper and read the words that he found in Romans chapter 8. Trembling as he read, the words came out the paper. He read words like, and we know that all things work together for good to those who love him. The call according to his purpose. He read the scriptures from Romans 8, 38 and 39, where Paul said, for I am persuaded that nothing shall be able to separate us from the love of Christ and the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Hen Pham wept and cried. He knew the Bible. And he knew there was not a more relevant passage for someone on the verge of surrender. He cried out to God, repented, asked for forgiveness. Because you see, this was to be the first day that he would not have prayed to God. But God showed up. God let him know that he was not alone. He was later released from prison. He fled to Thailand. Today he is a businessman in the United States. A radiant Christian and a living testimony to the power of God's word and its transforming power in someone's life. God showed up for Fian Ham. He'll show up for you too. So as we close, I ask you this morning, has the wine run out of your dreams, your hopes, your goals, expectations, your marriage, your family, your finances, or some other area? Mary told the disciples and those at the marriage feast, whatever he says to you, do it. The water pots were for purification and uncleanness. Maybe we need purification from sin. Maybe we need to pray about things in our life. Maybe we need to purify our own lives so Jesus can pour new wine into it. But whatever it is, this week I want you to pray and ask God to make himself real to you. Ask the Lord to make his presence in your life even greater and even more well known. Because if the wine has run out in your life, Jesus is ready to refill you. Praise God. Let us pray this morning. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you again for the opportunity we've had to hear this word. We thank you for the message of this great story of turning water into wine. Lord Jesus, there are many here this morning where the wine has run out in their life. The wine has run out in their marriage, in their family, in their finances. Their hopes and their dreams are dashed. We've walked around discouraged, despondent, and disillusioned. Lord, help us to realize that you're ever-present in our lives. You are an ever-present help in the time of trouble. Father, help us this, this, this morning to look unto you 
Lord Jesus, as the author and the finisher of our faith. Give us a good week of victory. Give us a good week of blessing. Forgive us for our sins and our failures. And help us to realize, Lord, that you're able to do exceeding abundantly above all we could ask or think through the power that works in us. Now bless us, we pray, Father, as we dismiss from this online worship service, but not from your presence. And we ask it all in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Well, thank you again for joining with me and being a part of this online message worship gathering for this Sunday. Just a quick reminder, we are starting a new series this coming Wednesday with Wednesday in the Word as our online study begins a new series on the book of Hebrews. I invite you to join us for our Bible study on Wednesday night online. Join us next Sunday as we come back together to worship and hear the message from God's Word. Have a blessed and wonderful week. May God be with you, and we look forward to having you back with us next time.